Aloha and welcome everyone. My name is Kimo and today I'm going to be showing you some crafts using baker's twine as my main material. So let's hop right into our first project. For this project, I'm using some baker's twine to create a really lovely boho twine wrapped bottle or jar. And it starts with this really cool bottle that used to contain a cocktail mixer. I really love the shape of it, the simplicity of it, and I thought it would make a great base for this project. We are going to apply some tacky glue at the base of our bottle, and from there we're going to start attaching our baker's twine, wrapping it around the base. In place of the tacky glue, I suppose I could have used some Mod Podge or other thick decoupage glue at the base of that jar, but I decided to go with tacky glue just because I thought it might be a little stronger. You can see here that I'm starting to attach our baker's twine to the base of our bottle and I'm slowly rotating that jar around so that, to ensure a really good wrap. Now I'm going pretty slowly on this, especially at the beginning, just because I want to make sure that the wrapped twine is matching up the way that I want it to, and I'm pushing ever so gently every now and then to make sure that we have as few gaps as possible in our project. Now one word of caution, tacky glue actually dries really, really quickly. And for that matter, I think that decoupage glue or Mod Podge also dries really quickly. So you can see that I'm just working in small sections, adding a thin stripe of glue as I go around the base there to ensure that I'm not working uh, with dried up glue. I'm also painting some of that tacky glue directly onto the baker's twine itself. That way I can ensure that nothing's going to be moving around. Now for the base, I used a baker's twine that included some, I guess, grayish, light blue kind of color. Uh, but for the second portion here, I'm going to be adding uh, a richer color. It is a baker's twine that includes a darker purple, and I thought that'd make a really nice contrast. And after I've completed wrapping the second baker's twine around that purple baker's twine, I'm gonna cut off the end and make sure that we adhere it to the surface of our jar, again using some of that tacky glue. Here I'm using a damp cloth to wipe away any excess glue, just so that I can make sure that we have as pristine a surface as possible. Now I've taken this little earring that uh, is part of my broken jewelry stash and I thought it'd make a really nice addition to our jar. So I'm gonna take some of that purple baker's twine, loop it through the chain and uh, do a double knot at the top of our earring here and that will be kind of a hanging embellishment on the front of our jar. For me, the broken jewelry piece kind of signifies um, this boho style. It's something that can be upcycled and it really provides a little bit of pizzazz to your project. I just use a little bit of hot glue to attach our broken jewelry piece by those hanging threads at the top. And now I'm gonna use some of this really cool faux leather ribbon that's from the Dollar Tree to wrap around the top of our jar. When I think of boho, I like combining different elements, different colors, and especially different textures. And I think that once we apply this faux ribbon to the top, it really is going to make this whole piece really kind of come together in that boho style. And once our ribbon is attached, here is our beautiful final result. Now with a jar that is this interesting and this beautiful, I decided to just put in some really simple lavender twigs. What do you think? Thank you for visiting me today. This video is part of the Twine It Up Challenge that's hosted by Fanny at Creations by Fabi and co-hosted by Sandra at DIYs at the Schwawen's Nest. Both of these ladies are such incredible makers. I have links to their channels in my description box below, as well as a link to the playlist where you'll find all the videos from the other makers who are also participating in this challenge. So please go ahead, check them out, 
Show them your love and support and let them know that Chemocraft sent you. For this project, I'm using a couple of different colors of Baker's twine to create some colorful twine wrapped Easter eggs. These plastic Easter eggs come in a pack from Dollar Tree and the first thing that I'm gonna do is to simply glue them shut with some tacky glue. And once our Easter egg is shut securely, I'm gonna start wrapping our baker's twine. At the very top, we're gonna to add some of that tacky glue and then very carefully begin to wrap our twine around in a circular pattern. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the trickiest part of this entire project, this uh, starting off with our wrapping at the top of the egg. And so, I would encourage you to just kind of take your time, and my technique here was to wrap a little bit and then paint a little bit of that tacky glue on just to kind of see uh, how things were going, and take my time, you know, be, be really patient with yourself and with the process at this point. You can see that as I'm wrapping it around, as I'm adding more tacky glue, I'm kind of taking my time and also letting uh, gravity uh, do as much of the work as possible. I'm not pulling very tightly, just trying to ensure as much as possible that those twine uh, threads are as close together as possible. Now once our first color is in place, our first color of baker's twine, I'm now going to add another color of baker's twine starting at the opposite end of the egg. So I'm using the same technique here starting at the other end of the egg with our tacky glue and with just kind of wrapping our baker's twine around very carefully and adding more uh, tacky glue as we go. And I wanted to take a minute just to say hello to all of my subscribers. Thank you, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. And if you are new here to my channel, I wanted to say welcome. And if you're liking what you see so far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for other kinds of DIYs and craft projects and all kinds of crazy things around here. And after gluing on all the baker's twine, here is our final result. I love the color and the texture of these eggs. I think you can display them just as is or incorporate them into an Easter DIY project. For this project, I'm using Baker's Twine to wrap these beautiful glass votive candle holders. And these candle holders come from Dollar Tree. I found them in a pack of five, believe it or not. And I'm gonna be adding a thin stripe of tacky glue at the base or at the bottom of our votive candle holders. While that tacky glue is still wet, I'm gonna be adding that baker's twine, slowly wrapping around the base of the votive candle holder. And again, because tacky glue dries so quickly, I'm just adding a thin stripe of tacky glue so that uh, I don't run into the problem of having dried tacky glue all over our votive candle holder. I'm also painting some of that tacky glue directly onto the baker's twine to ensure that everything's gonna be glued down and we won't have any fraying as well. Now for these votive candle holders, I just used one color of baker's twine, but you certainly could have used other colors to create a striped effect. I've got one votive candle holder in a yellow baker's twine, and then I'm also doing another one with an orange baker's twine. But I didn't just want to stop there. I thought it needed a little bit of embellishment. So I went to my broken jewelry stash and I got a couple of these really cool broken earrings that look kind of like pendants. Uh, they're just kind of, you know, those one-off uh, earrings that don't have a match there. And I decided to use that as a little hanging embellishment onto our votive candle holders. And by the way, I love your feedback. Let me know in a comment down below which of these projects is your favorite. So here you can see that I'm taking some of that orange baker's twine, wrapping it around the top of the candle holder, then I'm going to thread through that little broken earring piece and I'm going to tie it onto the front of our candle holder. 
And I'm going to be doing the same thing with our yellow votive candle holder as well. I just think having a little hanging embellishment just gives a little bit more interest and a little bit more bling to our project. And after ensuring that our little embellishments are just the way that I want them to be, here is our final result. I love the colors and I also love the way that the candle like pokes through the layers of baker's twine for this really lovely effect. I love the simplicity of this wood bead garland and really all it takes is wood beads and I'm gonna make some tassels out of our baker's twine. So let me show you how I make tassels. I start with the baker's twine in this case and I simply wrap 20 times around my hand. From there, I'm gonna take a section of baker's twine, probably about 10 to 12 inches long, and then I'm gonna thread it in between or tuck it underneath uh, that wrapped twine and I'm gonna tie it at the top with a double knot. From there, I'm gonna take another section of twine, about, again, 10 or 12 inches long, and I'm gonna wrap it around what I consider the head of our tassel, making sure that everything is taut and neat. After tying a single knot, I'm gonna wrap one end of that twine around a few times, and then secure it back by uh, tying a double knot at the top of our tassel. And now I'm taking the scissors and I'm going to cut off the loops on the end of our tassel. And then I'm gonna trim it down, kind of giving it a little bit of a haircut. So I've made two different tassels using the same baker's twine. And now I'm going to uh, do kind of a shoelace effect, which a couple of subscribers have let me know that this is called an aglet. So I'm creating an aglet at the top of our baker's twine, which will allow us to string our wooden beads. I've taken a section of baker's twine about a foot and a half long or so and I'm tying that directly to the top portion of one of the tassels. So my thought is that I wanted to have a tassel at each side of our garland. And so now that one tassel is in place at one end of our string, I'm gonna start uh, threading these wooden beads through. I love boho DIY projects, but I also love other styles too. Let me know in a comment down below what your favorite style is. And after we've strung enough wooden beads, we're gonna add the tassel to the other end of our garland. And before you know it, here is our beautiful final result. I really love the color and the texture and the dimension that we get from this project. Who knew that you could make such beautiful tassels with baker's twine? I love the happy spring vibes I'm getting from this spring wreath. And it all starts with this beautiful wreath form that I got from Dollar Tree. It actually came in a set of two and we're just gonna use the smaller one for this project. Now most of the baker's twine that I got from Dollar Tree comes in a pack of three small spools. But in this case, I knew that if I was going to wrap an entire wreath, I needed to have more baker's twine. And voila, this baker's twine also comes from Dollar Tree and it is a much bigger spool, which is gonna give me a lot of baker's twine to work with for this project. So as you can see here, I started out with a double knot and then I'm just wrapping this beautiful minty green baker's twine around and around and around our wreath. I probably did about three passes or so going completely around our wreath. Now to break up this green color story, I added a little bit of this magenta baker's twine and I'm gonna add it to the bottom half of our wreath. And that magenta color will also kind of tie into the beautiful flowers that we're gonna use later. And once I've wrapped all that baker's twine to my satisfaction, it's time to add some floral. 
The roses come from Dollar Tree and I love this beautiful peachy color with the pink at the base. And my technique for making flowers look really full is to attach them together at the base, which you can see that I'm gonna do here with all three of our roses. After sticking those three roses together at their base, I'm going to then attach them directly to the wreath using some hot glue. You can see that the pink color at the base of our flowers also ties in to the magenta baker's twine that we used for the bottom portion of our wreath. And you can see here that I'm just adding a little bit of greenery from Walmart onto our piece using some hot glue. And before you know it, here is our beautiful final result. This wrapped baker's twine is making me very, very happy. And I love the boho spring vibes that we're getting from this colorful wreath. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. And see you next time.